He got out Anderson Hunt, I'm sorry. He got out and pressured the ball and then made it difficult for the Aggies. They had to take a timeout. Hopefully that doesn't come back to home. Here's Hill. Clock is not a factor at all in the game. Anderson on the high post got nothing but glass that gets it back and has the reverse and it goes. Very fortuitous for Anderson. He threw a real brick up the first time. That was an over and back, but there was no call there. Underneath it goes to Ogden, and a foul is called from behind. I believe that the ball was caught on one side of the line and yeah, step back know, over. That's what Neil McCarthy is saying, and I think he's right. Let's take a look, see what you Here's think. Here's the pass right here. Now, you know why it's not over and back? He was straddled the line when he caught the ball, so if he is, it's not considered over and back. If he had not established his position in the front court when he caught the ball, then it would have been considered over and back. I thought the fisher made a good no call. On the replay, I agree. Ogden too hard. This has typically been an Achilles heel for the Rebels at the foul line. A shit is just over 60%. Ogden on a one of four, and now two of five. And it's a two-point game. The one thing that Neil McCarthy has to be pleased about, he doesn't have anybody that's afraid to take this shot. And that's what you want on your team, somebody willing to step up, take it, and he's got four players, five players out on the court that'll take it at any given moment. 44. Just get a good shot. Michael knew to the basket. And he drew the foul. With an opportunity to tie the game. Jared O'Kane looks just about the same now as he did when he walked in. He looked worried when he walked in. He looks worried now. He was very worried. And then again, he looks worried over coffee in the morning. <laughs> well, we got a good line here. A good guy to have at the line. He's an 86% foul shooter. Hope, uh, if I don't jinx him. But this is, again, again a guy that, that, that grew up in the city of Chicago, a suburb, Maywood, Illinois, is a suburb of Chicago, but there's some great players that come out of Maywood, Illinois. Reggie Jordan played with a lot of them. As I said, Lynn Rivers, Doc, uh, Jim Brewer, a lot of good players. So he knows what it's like, because the guys will tease you if you miss these shots. And he missed the second half, but they got it back. And a jump ball is the call. Alternated possession will go to the Aggies, and what an important possession. And now the Aggies can play to win it. Now, what do you do if you're Las Vegas? You, all you do is just play good, solid defense. You're up, you're up. So there's no need to be in a hurry. And you don't have uh, one thing you can't do for Vegas is don't foul. Let's see if they run the clock down and then take their last time out with about 12 or 13 seconds left. Good strategy. Just hold the ball out. 12 seconds left. They won't take a timeout. Hill takes the jumper. question is, was it too soon? There are still four seconds left. It can be an eternity. Well, you can say it was too soon, but I'm not sure that it really was. You just want to get one up. Right here, Keith Hill, who's played big games as we talked about before against Vegas, shoots the shot. I don't think he was shooting for the glass, but I'll tell you what, it's a safe shot to shoot because the glass is more forgiving. I think Hill just wanted to get it up there. It goes in. Now you're looking at four seconds. Watch Neil McCarthy. He's got a typical coach's reaction. Yeah, he realized it's not over, guys. And he's all 
of a sudden, look at it. He's trying to tell his players, regroup, guys. The game is not over yet. We're playing against a good team, and he knows it. Trying to keep his players off the court. He doesn't even want to take a prayer of a technical foul. Now, going here, what the Aggies need to do is pressure the ball. Don't let it get it up easily. But by the same token, be aware that behind me you have Larry Johnson, David Butler, and Stacey Altman. All of them can go get the lob. Needless to say, maniacal. Four seconds left. Baseball pass. Jump ball. Knocked away out of bounds. Still two seconds left. It'll be the Rebels' ball, and they will have a shot at it here. You put a man on the ball. The tallest man you have, you, you put him on the ball is, is what, I, what, what I would do right here. Record crowd, but at this point, that is incidental. <laughs> the record didn't matter. That making so much noise with the people they have in it. It didn't have to be a record. Here's the story. Two seconds left. Aggies lead by one. Vegas will have the ball. In the Aggie half of the court. This is a tough place to be in, but if you're the Aggies, I would suggest you put the tallest man you can on the ball. And the reason you want to do that is so you don't have an unobstructed pass to anybody. I would suggest that with two seconds, the most likely pass is a lob. You need your, your tallest people you can get back there. The quickest jumpers, tallest people under the basket. Be concerned about Larry Johnson going to get it and Stacey Ogden because those are the two quickest jumpers and Ogden has some incredibly long arms. And I'll tell you what's happening now, and there's the reason for the delay in the game. Bob Sidoff, who is the head official here, is taking a look at our replay monitor. Remember, we run the clock down in the bottom corner, as you can see. And now we'll take a look at it. You watch the clock, and this is what Bob Sidoff, the referee, is looking at right now also. He's going to see at what point the ball was hit and went out of bounds. And it looks like it's right at two seconds. That's a good call. It, two seconds was exactly the call. And that's what Tom Harrington is saying. By the time it broke the plane and hit something out of bounds, it was two seconds. One of the times that replay really is a good thing. Yeah, and one of the times that it, it was allowed in the game. But now here's another thing I have to ask you, too. When the ball is thrown in like that, does the clock start when the ball is thrown, or does the clock start when the ball hits the player's hand? Not until it hits the player's hand. But in this case, the clock started before that. All right, well, you, you caught that, because I thought the ball started when Anderson hit the ball, and then it hit the ground, and then as it went out of bounds, then it ticked from three to two. Probably only the difference of a second either way, but at this juncture, a second is a lot. Is a, lot. a second is the difference between a win and a, low, a loss here. And Las Vegas will take another timeout. What a reminder that more basketball coming your way next Monday, Big Monday, Syracuse versus Connecticut. Syracuse, of course, the number 16. They got a couple games they got to worry about before they get to Connecticut, however. And after that, It'll be Michigan and Illinois, two outstanding teams in the Big Ten Conference. Boy, home court, of course, really means a lot in that conference. Yeah, it really does. I mean, those teams, two good teams, great teams there. And then after that, it'll be Fresno State, and we'll see number seven, UNLV, all over again. Fresno State, another tough place to play. Well, I, you know, I believe that most of these places will, will be a tough place to play, but when you're ranked, the one thing that I always understood that when we were rated, ranked at Indiana was regardless of where you play, everybody shoots for you. You're, you're a star for them. For some people, you make their entire year. They can be 1 in 25, but if they beat a number 8, number 10 ranked team in the country, they've had a successful season. And that certainly is the case for Las Vegas. Everywhere they go, people are gunning for them. But I tell you what, I used to, I love that. I flat out love going in a place and people booing you and, and all of that because it, it, to me, it's a challenge just to go out and show people, look, we're just a good basketball team. We're not arrogant about it, but we're good and we like how good we are. I think Vegas likes that role too. I, I think they're aptly named the Rebels. <laughs> yeah, I'd agree with you.
Two seconds left in the game. Anthony will inbound. Jordan will play the ball. Johnson gets it, puts it up, short, it's over. The Aggies have won. And Las Cruces comes apart. The man has won 200 games in the last 10 years that he's coached, so he's obviously an outstanding coach, but you see he's still pretty much in control right here with this nice little smile. He realized he just pulled off a big one. And the only emotion, I think, for Neil McCarthy was just relief. So the shark has come to Las Cruces, and he got bit tonight. John Saunders, just another day at the office. You got it. Thanks a lot, Barry Tompkins. Just another big Monday, and a great one it was. New Mexico State, the first time in 15 tries, knock off the running Rebels of UNLV. They are now 3-0 in the conference. The Rebs drop to 4-1. A reminder.